Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hey there, Mr. Parker, Stephen Parker, the Stephen Parker. I told y'all I know him. I don't know why y'all think I don't know him. I know him. He's my brother. Blessing and thanking the Lord. Servant Carolyn Jacob, I'm not going to hold long, but would you get this out for us, please? Um, I've been having a difficult time getting on to um, Facebook. I don't know what's going on, um, but it's just been one of those kind of situations. Blessing and thanking the Lord. Love you, man of God. Um, but we're coming on. Okay, I see we're coming on. All right, so you're coming on. You're going to share. And uh, I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to share with you. But um, Servant Jacob, can you give me a confirmation that you're hearing me clearly? Servant Carolyn Jacob, she's a part of our media team. Hey there, Pastor Bobby. I love you, man of God. Great morning. Are you hearing me clearly? Just give me a thumbs up or something. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Thank you, Pastor Bobby. All right. So let's pray. And then I want to share with you just for a few minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me pray with you and you'll share this. And then uh, I want to tell you what the Lord put on my mind for you. Okay. And we're only going to be here for a few minutes. All right. Let's pray. Father, we just bless you and we thank you for moments that can only be orchestrated, organized by the Holy Spirit. We believe that this moment is ordained of you for your people. And so even as I have sought you in private, I thank you that you shall reward openly. I thank you for ears to hear. I bless you for promotions in prayer. And we call it done. We, we, we declare it to be so that even at the end of the hearing of this word, there will be promotions in prayer and we call it so and done in Jesus mighty name. We pray everyone who agreed said amen, amen, and amen. Thank you. Thank you, servant Carolyn. Uh, thank you, pastor Bobby. Okay. So this is what we want to talk about for a few minutes, how to pray publicly. I need you to put that in the post, how to pray publicly. I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes showing you how to pray publicly. Right now, we are in a certain kind of revival, a certain resurgence at the house and in prayer everywhere. Uh, just two weeks ago, we met in Waldorf, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C., the capital of this nation. And we had the World Prayer Congress. The World Prayer Congress is a gathering of the partners, Pastor John Fuller Lakay out of Monrovia, Liberia. He was able to Skype in with us and share in the World Prayer Congress. At the World Prayer Congress, we were given a more intensive assignment for our intercession. And one of the requirements of the Holy Spirit in the life of the partners of Prayer Everywhere is that we would be leaders of prayer and know how to pray publicly. Jesus had something to say about how to pray publicly. You're going to be called on to pray in front of people. Huh? What you say? You, ma'am, sir, are going to be called upon to pray in front of people. You have to pray publicly. Say, well, I'm just a quiet spirit and I just know we're not talking about your personality. We're talking about the requirements of the Holy Ghost. And you are required, believer, to mature to the place where you're going to be able to pray for other people publicly. And I want to give you just a, a, a tutorial, just a few instructions for the intercessor. Are you ready? I mean, this is for people who want to pray. This is for those of you who feel a little intimidated praying in front of other people. This is going to be your testimonial connected to this ministry because the one testimonial that is currently and constantly, consistently connected to prayer everywhere is when I started with prayer everywhere, I didn't know how to pray, but now I know how to pray. I can't tell you how many times we've heard that testimony. I can't even count over the years how many times we've heard that testimony. And there will be people 
who you will hear pray publicly from prayer everywhere. And you would never imagine that there was a time in their life where they thought they couldn't lead other people in prayer because you hear them now and they are so fluent in prayer. You would wonder it had to be years and years and years. It wasn't that long ago. It was not long ago, but what they did was they applied. And so I want to give you some truths, some principles, some strategies, a pattern that will help you pray publicly. All right. Are you ready? Yes. All right. How to pray publicly. Did you already post that? Because somebody's going to come on, want to know what he's talking about now. They'll know if they see your post, how to pray publicly. All right. Go with me to Matthew chapter six. I'm not going to hold you long. I'm not holding you long. Look at Matthew chapter six. Matthew chapter six. I want to pick up at verse seven. Matthew chapter six, verse seven. How to pray publicly. Just some keys, some hints, some principles, some precepts. Here it is. Verse seven. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. First of all, understand this. If you're going to pray publicly, praying publicly is not about much speaking. Praying publicly is not about you being elaborate in your language. Praying publicly is not about you knowing how to do the pose and the poetry that you've heard coming up in prayer. Being able to pray publicly has nothing to do with you being articulate or eloquent. It has everything to do with you knowing that when there is speaking, there will be hearing. Now, if I'm speaking and there is no hearing, I lose my motivation for speaking. Let me know you understood what I just said. If I'm speaking and I know there's no hearing, then I lose my motivation for speaking. Did you hear what I say? Did you get that? All right, let's try it again. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you're speaking and you know they're not hearing, you lose your motivation for speaking. What are you going to do? I ain't talking to them no more. They don't hear nothing I'm saying, right? And so the motivation in the speaking is not that I've got all my words lined up and, and, and I've written the prayer out and it sounds perfect. That has nothing to do with praying in public. Praying in public is not about you having all of your words all together and everything. No, it's not about you speaking. The emphasis is on you being heard. And so we want to put you in a position, not where you're doing a lot of speaking, but where the Lord is doing all of the hearing. Now look at verse eight. Be not therefore like many unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. Remember this when you pray in public. You're not giving God information. Now, how many times have you heard people pray in public and they give God all kind of information? I promise you the Lord knows that Oakland is ranked as the most dangerous city in California and third in America. I promise you the Lord has that information. I, I promise you the Lord knows that you stubbed your toe in the middle of the night. I promise you the Lord knows that, that you had COVID last year. I promise you, there is nothing you are going to give the Lord in the form of information. So when you're praying in public, you do not have to tell God all about it. And I know we grew up with those kind of prayer models, but it's not necessary because the father knows what you have need of before you ask him. So you're not bringing God information. Lord, you know, you know, that nephew of mine, Lord, he done done this and Lord, he done done this and Lord, you know, he done done this and Lord, he done went back to jail. Don't you think the Lord knows the process Pookie's in? And so instead of you thinking you bring in the Lord any information about Pookie, you need to be standing in faith of Pookie and begin to declare and cover Pookie in your prayers, not giving God information. So when we're praying in public, it's not about us saying the right thing or saying the same thing. It is about saying the right thing, which is the word of God. But it's not about your speaking. It's not about your eloquence, not about you being articulate. I can't pray like Bishop prays, so therefore I can't pray in public. That's not right. 
That's not true. You know, she prays so good. I just going to go to her and let her pray for me. No, that's not right. That's not good. You need to learn how to speak in prayer. And then you need to understand that when you're speaking in prayer, you don't have to give God information. You're not there before the throne for information. You're there before the throne for intercession. Now go to verse 9, Matthew 6 and 9. Matthew chapter six and verse nine. After this manner, manner means pattern. A manner is a pattern. After this pattern, a manner is a protocol. After this protocol, therefore pray. So prayer requires patterns and prayer requires protocols. Huh? What? <laughs> yes. Prayer requires patterns and prayer requires protocols. Now listen to the pattern and the protocol. After this manner, therefore pray. Watch this. Our father. When you pray publicly, you need to identify your God as your father. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 8. Paul says that when the Holy Spirit, Romans 8, 8th chapter, verse 16 and 17, that when the Holy Spirit is at work in the believer, the Holy Spirit urges an Abba out of us. The Holy Spirit helps us in prayer. And so if the Holy Spirit is helping us in prayer, then what would the Holy Spirit be helping us to identify? God is Father. Now, I need you to get out of the habit of God this and God this and God this and God this and God this. I hear you praying and you are addressing God, 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 and God, and God, and God, God, and God, and God. <laughs> but listen, when Jesus goes to the cross, he comes in on Father. When Jesus dies on the cross, he goes out on Father. The only time Jesus called God, God on the cross in prayer is when he felt forsaken. Bishop, what did you just say to us? When Jesus died on the cross, he came in with Father. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When Jesus died, he goes out on Father. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The one prayer that he prays on the cross where he refers to God as God, he was referring to God as God, quoting Psalm 22 and 1, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The only time he called him God is when he felt forsaken. Look at the prayer life of Jesus. Why are you looking at me like that? You act like I just said something. Look at the prayer life of Jesus and what you will see is Jesus consistently called God Father. So when we pray in public and we're praying with believers, especially with believers, but of course in front of sinners, but especially with believers, we need to call God Father. Now here's something else I want you to watch. Notice the language is in the plural possessive. It is our Father. It is give us this day. You see, it, it's the us and it's the our and it's the we as we forgive, right? You got the us, you got the our, you got the we. So when you are praying in public, you do not use your personal pronouns. You're praying in public. So that means you're praying in the proxy for the rest of us. So you shouldn't be saying I, 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 me, 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 my, my, my. That's for your closet. But when you're praying in public, you need to have language that includes the rest of us. Lord, we come tonight. Lord, we bless you. Lord, it is our delight and our desire. Lord, we want to thank you for what you have done for us. I need to know you're hearing this. I need to know that you're getting this. This is how to pray in public. When you're praying in public, you're praying for the hour. You're praying for the us. You're praying for the we. Put your pronouns in the plural when you pray in public. When I raise my right hand, I'm asking you, do you understand what I'm saying? And if you understand what I'm saying, do something so I can move on to my next point. Thank you for the hearts. <laughs> Are you here? How do you pray in public? 
You pray in public, not just doing the same repetitions. You pray in public, not thinking because I'm talking long or I'm talking much, then that means God must be hearing me. You're praying, you're not handing God information. You're not telling God what's going wrong in Liberia. You're not telling God what's going wrong in America. He already knows that. You're there not for information. You're there for intercession. You got it? And then when you pray, you should be referring to the God as Father. Father. The Holy Ghost is helping you pray, which means our Abba ought to be coming out of your mouth. I was a little animated, but I need you to get that point. And when you pray, pray in the plural. You're praying for the us. You're praying for the our. You're praying for the we. Get that, all that I, me, and my out of your prayers when you're praying in public. Here's another principle. When you are praying in public, always begin with praise, worship, and adoration. When you're praying in public, always begin with praise, worship, and adoration. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. You come in with a hallow, you're going to go out with a hallow. You come in giving him glory, you're going to go out giving him glory. You come in with a praise, you go out with a praise. You don't run into the throne room throwing your list at God and telling God we got to do for you today. You are out of order. You just walked in front of a sovereign. You just went into the room of a majesty. You just stepped in front of his honor. You might want to give some worship. You might want to genuflect. You just might want to adore him. You might want to heap some praise on him before you start telling him what he needs to do for you today. Publicly, when you pray, come in with praise. And publicly, when you pray, exit with praise. Be grateful in prayer. In the beginning of your prayer, be grateful. And at the end of your prayer, be grateful. Here's something else when you're praying in public. Pray for the will of God to be done. When you're praying in public, pray for the will of God to be done. Now, there are some things specifically that are not in the scripture, right? Um, you're not going to find in the scripture the house that you're supposed to buy. But God has a will for the neighborhood and community he wants you in. And so when you're praying in public, you have all of these different disparate needs that people have. So what you want to do is pray the template for the kingdom of God. To he wants to do it. And then you want to pray that his will will be done in the lives of the people that you are praying with or you're praying for in public. Because you do not know every need and every situation that is there with you in prayer. So what are you going to do? You're going to pray for the kingdom of God to come. You're going to pray for the will of God to be done. Because people will hand you their own prayer targets. And sometimes when they hand you a prayer target, what they're praying is, my kingdom come, my will be done. So you have to be discerning enough to rise above what people will for themselves and what people perceive as their real needs. And then you have to pray, Lord, in this situation, in this setting, for everybody who's here, I'm praying that your kingdom will come and that your will will be done. And then when you're praying in public, you want to pray for, again, needs to be met. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, be mindful. Daily bread is not money. Daily bread is not even a sandwich. Daily bread is whatever you need today to fulfill your kingdom assignment. Some of you have this teaching already. Your daily bread is whatever you need today to fulfill your kingdom assignment. Some days it's money. Some days all you need is money to fulfill your kingdom assignment. But then other days it's not money. You need something other than money to fulfill your kingdom assignment. So when you're praying in public, you're not asking God to give people money. Don't pray for money. You teach people Matthew 633, you'll never have to ask them to pray for money. What you're doing is praying that they would be sustained and fulfilled in whatever they need to fulfill their kingdom assignment. And then Jesus says, pray to forgive debts as we forgive our debtors. So when you're praying in public, there can be a general confession of sin. If you want to understand that, you can look at Nehemiah chapter 2. You can look at Daniel chapter 9. And they will give you instances when one person had to stand for a group and repent. 
one person. Daniel is repenting for the whole nation. Nehemiah, repent. Oh, Ezra does the same thing. Ezra chapter nine. Ezra repenting for the same, repenting for the whole nation. One person, but praying publicly that God would cleanse all of the people who are present in the moment of that prayer. So this is a general repentance, but you are standing as an intercessor. You're standing in proxy and you are repenting and you're repenting on behalf of the people. Now, you may not have done everything that you're repenting of, but you're repenting on the behalf of the people. Daniel was not in the sin that Israel was in. The Bible said he had an excellent spirit. The Bible says Daniel was a righteous man. So he was not in the same sin as his nation. But when he stood before Yahweh in prayer publicly, he took it on as if it was his own. He repented as if he was the one that did the sin. That's called intercession. Then finally, when we are praying in public, we're praying that we would be led away from the inner me's and the enemies. The inner me's and the enemies. You got it? Here the inner me's. Lead us not into temptation. That's the inner me. Pressure on flesh. What is the temptation? Pressure on flesh. What is the temptation? Pressure on flesh. When you have pressure on your flesh, that's a temptation. You getting this? So when you're praying publicly, you're praying that people would be delivered from the pressure that's on their flesh. And then you're praying that people would be delivered from demonic devices, the enemy. That there is a real devil in the world and we're praying that you would be hedged and that you would be secured and that you would not be devoured by the enemy himself. When you pray in public, use the pattern. When I'm praying in public, I don't even think about it. I know I'm using this pattern. I'm going to come in, giving God a praise. I'm going to honor him as father. I'm going to declare his kingdom to come, his will to be done. I'm looking for God to give his people everything they need today to do what he's called them to do. I'm praying that there would be no sin to get in the way of what we need to do today. I'm asking God that he would go ahead and just deal with the pressure that's on my flesh so I don't fail him today. And I'm praying that every demonic device, every weapon formed against God's people would be broken and could not prosper. If you got it, let me know you got it. All right. Now, you know, I could be here all day on this, but I didn't come to be here all day. I just came to give you this precious precept pop up. You are being called upon to pray for people in public. You can't run from this. God has put you in a prayer movement. You are a partner with a prayer pastor. You're going to have to prepare yourself to pray for other people out loud in front of people, sometimes even on a camera. Huh? On a camera? Maybe. I don't know. But here's what you'll need to do. Prep yourself with the patterns and the protocols that you need so you can effectively pray in public. Now, if you think I helped you today, if you think I helped you today, let me know. Yes, man of God, I think you helped me today. <laughs> I'm getting ready to pray for those who want to pray in public. Y you want the Lord to take your prayer life into this level of promotion. I want to pray for you. Yes, Bishop, that's me. Pray for me. I want to take my prayer life to the next level. I need to pray in public. I need to be prepared to pray in public. I've been shy about this. I've been trying to run from this. I've been ducking and dodging you, Bishop. Because I know you're trying to assign me a prayer point, and I ain't trying to hear it. I want you, child of God, member of the house, and partner of prayer everywhere, to come on in with your prayer pastor, and let's take on this promotion. If I'm praying for you, praying with you, let me know. Yes, man of God, you're praying with me. I want my prayer promotion. Yes, yes, man of God, you're praying with me. I want my prayer promotion. Yes, man of God, you're praying with me. I want my prayer promotion. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. We bless you. And we thank you that you heard us coming in and you have answered us going out. You have given your people prayer promotions. Now I pray, let this word be provocation. Let this word be preparation. Let this word give understanding. Let this word give unction. But Father, when it's said and done, take us to the next place of prayer. We want to be there 
And for those who have operated in any kind of fear or intimidation, I thank you that that intimidation, that fear is gone. You don't give us the spirit of fear, but in prayer, we're going to take on the spirit of love and power and a sound mind. And we love you and we bless you and we thank you for it. We call it so and done in Jesus mighty name. We pray everyone who agrees said. Amen, amen, and amen. I know I came on a different way than I normally come on. I've just been having a difficult time getting on, but I had such an unction to get on and share this with you. I'm telling you, I did whatever it took. And so this is what you got this morning. You got whatever it took. So I'm loving you. I'm appreciating you. Make sure you stay contact and connected with this ministry. This is prayer everywhere. This is the house of prayer everywhere. And if you are not aware of the ministry of prayer everywhere, you can always go to W www.prayereverywhere.org. And if you have not done so, subscribe. Go to YouTube and subscribe to The House Network. That's us, The House of Prayer Everywhere, Oakland, California, which is the home and the hub of Prayer Everywhere International. Again, I'm loving on you. I'm appreciating you. I'm thanking the Lord for you. This is your prayer pastor, Bishop Sean Till. Have a wonderful day. Oh, don't forget, share. Don't forget, push the button right there. Push that button right there. Do it now. Share. See how easy that was? And you made a difference today in somebody else's life. I love you. Have a great day. Your prayer pastor, Bishop Sean Till.